The English language was first introduced to the Americas by British colonization, beginning in the late 16th and early 17th centuries. Similarly, the language spread to numerous other parts of the world as a result of British trade and colonisation elsewhere and the spread of the former British Empire, which, by 1921, held sway over a population of 470 to 570 million people, approximately a quarter of the world's population at that time. Over the past 400 years, the form of the language used in the Americas, especially in the United States, and that used in the United Kingdom have diverged in a few minor ways, leading to the versions now occasionally referred to as American English and British English. Differences between the two include pronunciation, grammar, vocabulary, lexis, spelling, punctuation, idioms, and formatting of dates and numbers. However, the differences in written and most spoken grammar structure tend to be much less than those of other aspects of the language in terms of mutual intelligibility. A small number of words have completely different meanings in the two versions or are even unknown or not used in one of the versions. One particular contribution towards formalizing these differences came from Noah Webster, who wrote the first American Dictionary published 1828 with the intention of showing that people in the United States spoke a different dialect from Britain, much like a regional accent. This divergence between American English and British English has provided opportunities for humorous comment, e.g., George Bernard Shaw has a character say that the United States and United Kingdom Kingdom are two countries divided by a common language, and Oscar Wilde that we have really everything in common with America nowadays, except, of course, the language. The Canterville Ghost, 1888. Henry Sweet incorrectly predicted in 1877 that within a century American English, Australian English, and British English would be mutually unintelligible, a handbook of phonetics. It may be the case that increased worldwide communication through radio, television, the Internet and globalization has reduced the tendency towards regional variation. This can result either in some variations becoming extinct for instance, the wireless, being progressively superseded by the radio or in the acceptance of wide variations as perfectly good English everywhere. Although spoken American and British English are generally mutually intelligible, there are occasional differences which might cause embarrassment. For example, in American English a rubber is usually interpreted as a condom rather than an eraser, and a British fanny refers to the female pubic area, while the American fanny refers to an ass US or an ass UK. Topic word derivation and compounds Directional suffix wards, British forwards, towards, rightwards, etc., American forward, toward, rightward. In both dialects distribution varies somewhat, afterwards, towards, and backwards are not unusual in America, while in Britain upward and rightward are the more common options, as is forward, which is standard in phrasal verbs such as look forward to. The forms with s may be used as adverbs or preposition towards but rarely as adjectives, in Britain as in America, one says an upward motion. The Oxford English Dictionary in 1897 suggested a semantic distinction for adverbs, with wards having a more definite directional sense than ward. Subsequent authorities such as Fowler have disputed this contention. American English am freely adds the suffix s to day, night, evening, weekend, Monday, etc. to form adverbs denoting repeated or customary action. I used to stay out evenings, the library is closed Saturdays. This usage has its roots in Old English but many of these constructions are now regarded as American for example, the OED labels nights now chiefly enama, colloque, in constructions such as to sleep nights, but to work nights is standard in British English. In British English bray, the agentive er suffix is commonly attached to football also cricket, often netball, occasionally basketball and volleyball. Am usually uses football player. 
where the sport's name is usable as a verb, the suffixation is standard in both dialects, for example, golfer, bowler in ten-pin bowling and in lawn bowls, and shooter. Am appears sometimes to use the Bray form in Bala as slang for a basketball player, as in the video game NBA Ballers. However, this is derived from slang use of to ball as a verb meaning to play basketball. English writers everywhere occasionally make new compound words from common phrases, for example, health care is now being replaced by health care on both sides of the Atlantic. However, am has made certain words in this fashion that are still treated as phrases in Bray. In compound nouns of the form, sometimes am prefers the bare infinitive where Bray favors the gerund. Examples include am first, jump rope, skipping rope, race car, racing car, rowboat, rowing boat, sailboat, sailing boat, file cabinet, filing cabinet, dial tone, dialing tone, drainboard, draining board. Generally am has a tendency to drop inflectional suffixes, thus preferring clipped forms, compare cookbook v, cookery book, smith, age 40 v, smith, aged 40, skim milk v, skimmed milk, dollhouse v. Doll's house, barber shop v. Barber's shop. This has recently been extended to appear on professionally printed commercial signage and some boxes themselves not mere greengrocers chalkboards, can vegetables and mashed potatoes appear in the U.S. Singular attributives in one country may be plural in the other, and vice versa. For example, the UK has a drugs problem, while the United States has a drug problem although the singular usage is also commonly heard in the UK, Americans read the sports section of a newspaper, the British are more likely to read the sports section. However, Bray Maths is singular, just as AM Math is, both are abbreviations of mathematics. Some British English words come from French roots, while American English finds its words from other places, e.g. am eggplant and zucchini are aubergine and courgette in Bray. Similarly, American English has occasionally replaced more traditional English words with their Spanish counterparts. This is especially common in regions historically affected by Spanish settlement such as the American Southwest and Florida as well as other areas that have since experienced strong Hispanic migration such as urban centers. Examples of these include grocery markets preference in the U.S. for Spanish names such as cilantro and manzanilla over coriander and chamomile respectively. Topic Vocabulary Topic Overview of lexical differences Note A lexicon is not made up of different words but different units of meaning. Lexical units or lexical items, e.g., fly ball in baseball, including idioms and figures of speech. This makes it easier to compare the dialects. Though the influence of cross-culture media has done much to familiarize Bray and Am speakers with each other's regional words and terms, many words are still recognized as part of a single form of English. Though the use of a British word would be acceptable in am and vice versa, most listeners would recognize the word as coming from the other form of English and treat it much the same as a word borrowed from any other language. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Words and phrases that have their origins in Bray. Most speakers of AM are aware of some Bray terms, although they may not generally use them or may be confused as to whether someone intends the American or British meaning such as for biscuit. It is generally very easy to guess what some words, such as driving license, mean. However, use of many other British words such as naff slang but commonly used to mean not very good are unheard of in American English. Topic. 
words and phrases that have their origins in am. Speakers of Bray are likely to understand most common AM terms, examples such as sidewalk pavement, gas, gasoline, petrol, counterclockwise, anticlockwise, or elevator lift, without any problem, thanks in part to considerable exposure to American popular culture and literature. Certain terms that are heard less frequently, especially those likely to be absent or rare in American popular culture, e.g., copacetic, satisfactory, are unlikely to be understood by most Bray speakers. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Divergence. Topic. <inaudible> Words and phrases with different meanings Words such as bill and biscuit are used regularly in both am and bray but can mean different things in each form. The word, bill, has several meanings, most of which are shared between am and bray. However, in am, bill, often refers to a piece of paper money as in a dollar bill which in Bray is more commonly referred to as a note. In am it can also refer to the visor of a cap. In am a biscuit from the French twice baked as in biscotto is what in Bray is called a scone and a biscuit in Bray is in am a cookie from the Dutch little cake. As chronicled by Winston Churchill, the opposite meanings of the verb to table created a misunderstanding during a meeting of the Allied forces. In Bray to table an item on an agenda means to open it up for discussion whereas in am, it means to remove it from discussion, or at times, to suspend or delay discussion. The word, football, in Bray refers to association football, also known as soccer. In am, Football means American football. The standard AM term, soccer, a contraction of association football, is of British origin, derived from the formalization of different codes of football in the 19th century, and was a fairly unremarkable usage, possibly marked for class, in Bray until relatively recently. It has lately become perceived incorrectly as an Americanism. In international i.e. non-American context, particularly in sports news outside English-speaking North America, American or U.S. branches of foreign news agencies also use football to mean soccer, especially in direct quotes. Similarly, the word hockey in Bray refers to field hockey and in am. Hockey means ice hockey. Topic: Other ambiguity, complex cases. Words with completely different meanings are relatively few. Most of the time, there are either one words with one or more shared meanings and one or more meanings unique to one variety. For example, bathroom and toilet, or two words the meanings of which are actually common to both bray and am, but that show differences in frequency, connotation, or denotation. For example, smart, clever, mad. Some differences in usage and or meaning can cause confusion or embarrassment. For example, the word fanny is a slang word for vulva in Bray but means buttocks in am. The am phrase fanny pack is bum bag in Bray. In am the word pissed means being annoyed whereas in Bray it is a coarse word for being drunk in both varieties, pissed off means irritated. Similarly, in am the word pants is the common word for the bray trousers and knickers refers to a variety of half-length trousers though most am users would use the term shorts rather than knickers, while the majority of bray speakers would understand pants to mean underpants and knickers to mean female underpants. Sometimes the confusion is more subtle. In am the word quite used as a qualifier is generally a reinforcement, for example, I'm quite hungry, means, I'm very hungry. 
in Bray quite which is much more common in conversation may have this meaning, as in, quite right, or quite mad, but it more commonly means, somewhat, so that in Bray, I'm quite hungry, can mean, I'm somewhat hungry. This divergence of use can lead to misunderstanding. Topic. Frequency In the UK the word whilst is historically acceptable as a conjunction as an alternative to while, especially prevalent in some dialects. In am only while is used in both contexts. Other conjunctions with the street ending are also found even in am as much as in bray, despite being old-fashioned or an affection. Whilst tends to appear in non-temporal senses, as when used to point out a contrast. In the UK generally the term fall meaning, autumn, is obsolete. Although found often from Elizabethan literature to Victorian literature, continued understanding of the word is usually ascribed to its continued use in America. In the UK the term period for a full stop is not used, in AM the term full stop is rarely, if ever, used for the punctuation mark. For example, Tony Blair said, Terrorism is wrong, full stop. Whereas in AM, Terrorism is wrong, period. The use of the interjection, period to mean, and nothing else, end of discussion is beginning to be used in colloquial British English, though sometimes without conscious reference to punctuation. <laughs> <laughs> Holiday greetings It is increasingly common for Americans to say, Happy Holidays! referring to all, or at least multiple, winter in the Northern Hemisphere or summer in the Southern Hemisphere holidays Christmas, Hanukkah, winter solstice, Kwanzaa, etc. especially when one's religious observances are not known, the phrase is rarely heard in the UK. In Britain, the phrases, holiday season, and holiday period, refer to the period in the summer when most people take time off from work and travel am does not use holiday in this sense instead using vacation for recreational excursions in am the prevalent christmas greeting is merry christmas which is the traditional english christmas greeting famously found in the english christmas carol we wish you a merry christmas and which appears several times in Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol. In Bray, Happy Christmas is a common alternative to Merry Christmas. Topic: <inaudible> 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 Idiosyncratic differences. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Figures of speech Both Bray and Am use the expression, I couldn't care less, to mean the speaker does not care at all. Some Americans use, I could care less, to mean the same thing. This variant is frequently derided as sloppy, as the literal meaning of the words is that the speaker does care to some extent. In both areas, saying, I don't mind, often means, I'm not annoyed, for example, by someone's smoking, while, I don't care, often means, the matter is trivial or boring. However, in answering a question such as, tea or coffee, if either alternative is equally acceptable an American may answer, I don't care, while a British person may answer, I don't mind. Either sounds odd to the other. Topic: <inaudible> Equivalent idioms. A number of English idioms that have essentially the same meaning show lexical differences between the British and the American version. For instance, asterisk in the U.S. a 
carpet typically refers to a fitted carpet rather than a rug topic <laughs> style topic <laughs> use of that and which in restrictive and non-restrictive relative clauses Generally, a non-restrictive relative clause also called non-defining or supplementary is one that contains information that is supplementary, i.e. does not change the meaning of the rest of the sentence, while a restrictive relative clause also called defining or integrated is, one which contains information essential to the meaning of the sentence, effectively limiting the modified noun phrase to a subset that is defined by the relative clause. An example of a restrictive clause is, "...the dog that bit the man was brown". An example of a non-restrictive clause is, "...the dog, which bit the man, was brown". In the former, "...that bit the man", identifies which dog the statement is about. In the latter, "...which bit the man", provides supplementary information about a known dog. A non-restrictive relative clause is typically set off by commas, whereas a restrictive relative clause is not, but this is not a rule that is universally observed. In speech, this is also reflected in the intonation. Writers commonly use which to introduce a non-restrictive clause, and that to introduce a restrictive clause. That is rarely used to introduce a non-restrictive relative clause in prose. Which and that are both commonly used to introduce a restrictive clause. A study in 1977 reported that about 75% of occurrences of which were in restrictive clauses. H. W. Fowler, in A Dictionary of Modern English Usage of 1926, followed others in suggesting that it would be preferable to use which as the non-restrictive, what he calls non-defining pronoun, and that as the restrictive, what he calls defining pronoun. But he also stated that this rule was observed neither by most writers nor by the best writers. He implied that his suggested usage was more common in American English. Fowler notes that his recommended usage presents problems, in particular that that must be the first word of the clause, which means, for instance, that which cannot be replaced by that when it immediately follows a preposition e.g., the basic unit from which matter is constructed, though this would not prevent a stranded preposition e.g., the basic unit that matter is constructed from. Style guides by American prescriptivists, such as Brian Garner, typically insist, for stylistic reasons, that that be used for restrictive relative clauses and which be used for non-restrictive clauses, referring to the use of which in restrictive clauses as a mistake. According to the 2015 edition of Fowler's Dictionary of Modern English Usage, in am which is not generally used in restrictive clauses, and that fact is then interpreted as the absolute rule that only that may introduce a restrictive clause, whereas in Bray, either that or which may be used in restrictive clauses, but many British people believe that that is obligatory. Writing Topic. Spelling Before the early 18th century English spelling was not standardized. Different standards became noticeable after the publishing of influential dictionaries. For the most part current Bray spellings follow those of Samuel Johnson's Dictionary of the English Language 1755, while AM spellings follow those of Noah Webster's An American Dictionary of the English Language 1828. In Britain, the influences of those who preferred the French spellings of certain words proved decisive. In many cases AM spelling deviated from mainstream British spelling, on the other hand it has also often retained older forms. 
Many of the now characteristic AM spellings were popularized, although often not created, by Noah Webster. Webster chose already existing alternative spellings, on such grounds as simplicity, analogy or etymology. Webster did attempt to introduce some reformed spellings, as did the Simplified Spelling Board in the early 20th century, but most were not adopted. Later spelling changes in the UK had little effect on present-day US spelling, and vice versa. Topic: Punctuation. Topic: Full stops and periods in abbreviations. There have been some trends of transatlantic difference in use of periods in some abbreviations. These are discussed at abbreviation section periods, full stops, and spaces. Unit symbols such as kilogram and hz are never punctuated. Topic: <laughs> Parentheses, brackets. In British English, quote opening parenthesis closing parenthesis quote marks are often referred to as brackets, whereas quote opening square bracket closing square bracket quote are called square brackets and quote opening curly bracket closing curly bracket quote are called curly brackets. In formal British English and in American English quote opening parenthesis closing parenthesis quote marks a parenthesis singular parenthesis quote opening square bracket closing square bracket quote are called brackets or square brackets and quote opening curly bracket closing curly bracket quote can be called either curly brackets or curly braces in both countries, standard usage is to place punctuation outside the parenthesis, unless the entire sentence is contained within them. I am going to the store if it is still open. This page is intentionally blank. In the case of a parenthetical expression which is itself a complete sentence, the final punctuation may be placed inside the parenthesis, particularly if not a full stop. I am going to the store. Is it still open? I am going to the store. I hope it's still open. Topic: Demographics. Linguist Braj Katru, quoted by the Christian Science Monitor in 1996, stated that American English is spreading faster than British English. The Monitor stated that English taught in Europe, India, and parts of Asia and Africa is more British influenced, while English taught in Latin America, Japan, mainland China, Taiwan, and South Korea is more American influenced. However, informal English use outside the classroom is more influenced by the United States. Americans greatly outnumber Britons. In addition, as of 1993, the United States controlled 75% of the world's TV programming. A BBC columnist assessed in 2015 that, "...American English is the current dominant force globally, like it or not." See also Lists of words having different meanings in American and British English American and British English pronunciation differences American and British English spelling differences American and British English grammatical differences <laughs>